In terms of the study guide, again, I wanted to lay out everything you need a week ahead of time so that you're good uh, to go. <laughs> you're good to go uh, for this. Two sections. Uh, two sections. Um, I actually prefer the second section. And the second section is kind of weighted in terms of the weight. Um, we sort of understand multiple choice, but basically what I've done here is list the terms that I'm using to create the multiple choice questions, uh, questions and answers. So these are the things you definitely should be familiar with. I tried to break them down based on chapter. Um, some of them we're still working through, uh, but you kind of see how it goes there. Um, again, I give this to you ahead of time so you have time to sort of put in the work and you know, refresh your memory as to things we've talked about. Or you look up some of the things that either appear in lecture notes or in books or various videos or what have you, or all three. Um, some of these things may appear in different places. <coughs> you have to know enough, obviously, to be able to answer the question, um, the multiple choice question. Now, I'm not a huge fan of multiple choice, but they do serve a purpose, right? They're kind of specific, you know, testing of specific information. The reason why I'm not a huge fan is because they often can be misleading. Uh, the way that they're often written is sometimes the question is the hardest part. Uh, figuring out what is being asked and that you're answering what is being asked. So pay attention to that. You have to know enough about them to, to do that. Uh, in terms of the second section, I haven't said so much about this yet, so I want to say a little bit about this um, right now. Identifications. Identification terms, those of you who have me before, so I don't know how this goes. Um, I want you to be able to, as I said the first day, make a case. Uh, make a specific case and make an argument. Back that argument up with evidence. Right? I'm more interested in you being able to do that than you being able to recite everything I stood up here and talked about. I already know what I think. You know, I have notes too, which I go through, so I don't need you to tell me all of that. What I need you to do is be able to make an argument about um, several of the key terms and concepts and people, places, things that we talk about in the course of, of the semester. So the way the identifications work is basically what you're doing is um, – four to six, five to seven sentences, some, something like that, you are breaking down the who, what, when, where, and why of the term, you know, person, place, thing, what have you. Uh, who, what, when, where, why. Those of you journalism communication majors are very familiar with the five W's. Uh, journalists, who, what, when, where, why. Um, you can think of identifications in that manner. You are sort of telling a who, what, when, where, why. It's not just the definition of these terms. It's not just a definition. So Booker T. Washington was an African-American figure after Reconstruction. That, that's a, the beginning of it. That's the definition. That's the kind of who. Um, but I want you to think about this sort of larger package, who, what, when, where, why. Actually, the most important part is the why. That's the significance. That's the so what. So be thinking, what does this term tell us about American history in this period? What does it tell us about the larger concepts that we keep coming back to? Does it tell us something about uh, Imagine Community or Tipping Point? tipping points in it. Does it tell us something about the American dream or American exceptionalism or race, class, gender? Are we been dealing with a lot of big concepts already in the first five weeks? Like, does this term, what does this term allow you to talk about? What does it allow you to connect it to? Right, that's the kind of why or how significance that's most important. But to get there, you have to know the sort of basic context, basic sort of definition type who, what, when, where. Uh, we just talked about uh, social Darwinism and um, gospel of wealth today, right? So we, we could use those as examples, running through them right now. Um, gospel of wealth, who, what, when, where? Well, who is associated with Andrew Carnegie's book, right? An article when, 1880s, 1890s, general time period. I'm not going to dock you huge points if you're off a year, right? That's not what this is about. Uh, what it's about is you being able to contextualize it and then make a case about why it's significant. So who, what, when, where? Um, Carnegie's and, and Pittsburgh is a steel you know, magnet, these sorts of things. Um, but it's really about this period in American history. Most important, though, why and how? So what? Why do we care about this? Why is it so significant? What would you say about that? What's, what's the significance, the larger so what, or the why about gospel of wealth? What would you say about that? The significance, I feel, you know, is really tied to religion. So, you know, we have these people who have made such a massive amount of wealth in, you know, the lifetime. And now that's, how do you distribute that? Do you pass it down, like, as an inheritance, or do you give it to, you know, the community as a way to, as a development? Okay. 
So yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a question. You notice this a lot. Young people tend not to think maybe in these terms as much as older folks, right? When you confront your own mortality, you have to think about certain things and the larger significance of them. So Carnegie okay, now has all this money in the bank, but he's getting old. He's like, okay, what you know, what legacy am I going to leave? Right. To lead, yeah, leave. <laughs> um, so you can see again how a social Dar Darwinism and a social gospel, uh, uh, gospel of work and other things are in competition with one another. You can get a sense of this larger um, idea. Even imagine community comes into that, right? He's connecting himself to a larger community, not just about him. Uh, so be thinking of these terms in that way. Now some of them we haven't you know, got quite gotten to yet. We're going to finish them up next week, but they're the same, in, in some sense, it's the same idea, who, what, one, where, and the larger significance. I imagine these as kind of mini essays in a way, because in an essay, that's really what you do, right? your introduction, and then your thesis. Right? Your thesis, why is it significant in a larger sense? Be thinking of them that way. Yes, sir? Do you know how many out of 10 we're going to have to No, a good question. Um, I, haven't, well, I haven't put it on there yet. Um, what I do with these, again, that you have the study guide here, these are the 10 possible. Uh, what I'll do, say, is put eight of them on the test, and you'll have to answer like four of them. So you have some choice, but you don't know exactly which ones. But you do know that nothing that's not on this sheet will be on the test. So this gives you some, uh, some parameters to begin your presentations. I'll probably give you some time in class and groups next week to sort of go through some of these as well. All right? Take care.